Fishes way off into all from the water. They don't work very well on land. That's why fish need to be in the water. Although there are some fish that, um, like the lungfish or the mud skipper, that can spend significant amounts of time out of the water. For example, mud skipper can sometimes move from pond to pond um, by moving onto land and using its flippers to crawl across the land into another pond. So there is some variation, but generally uh, fishes, gills only work in the water. Uh, so we talked about those things. All right, the swim bladder. Um, an organ that's found is sort of like a little balloon inside of the fish internally. And can you guess what it does, what its function is? Yeah, it, it can, a fish can force air into that swim bladder or squeeze air out, and it regulates how the fish floats in the water, its buoyancy. Okay. You know, if you've ever been sort of swimming in a pool, if you had like a beach ball in the pool or a float, and you try and hold it underwater, how it's right back up. If you have like a half deflated beach ball, you could probably do it a little bit easier, but it could still probably hold you afloat, you know, floating halfway down. Or if it was completely deflated, then you could sink to the bottom. Same thing if you're trying to like do, do a back float and just lay there in the water. If you, but then if you exhale all that air, you start to sink, okay? And that's because that air gives you extra buoyancy and an easier ability to float. And fish have the same thing. Um, it's called the swim bladder. It's inside. It's like this little balloon. Water fish, like the bladder would just like burst open. It wouldn't like actually burst open, but it would get bigger because it went up higher in the water. So if we threw it back in, then it would just be floating. Up. Yeah. Yeah. When I was um, when I was in college, we went. I had to take this class. I told you on ichthyology. That's the study of fish. Ichthyology. And uh, we went on a boat in Lake Champlain. I went to the University of Vermont in Lake Champlain. And we went on like big uh, research vessel. And one of the things that had was nets. Um, kind of like you see on those shows on TV, um, like Deadliest Catch. Not a big fishing boat like that, but similar equipment where you have some nets that you can cast into the water and then you, you put them a certain level, you hoist them back in, you spill the nets there and you see what kind of fish to sort of study the fish in the um, that are in the lakes. And so we did that one time. We went on this fishing boat and um, saw a couple things that fish. Um, they're kind of cool. But we, we had the same experience where some of the fish that we brought on board, you, you could pick them up, and they're, most of them are alive, and you could study them and then throw them back. But some of them were dead, and some of them had a little bubble coming out of their mouth. Yeah. Their mouths were like open, and a little bubble was coming out of their mouth. And what that was is where their swim bladder. Because when they were immense amount of water pressure, just like if you ever swim to the bottom of a 10 foot deep swimming pool and you could feel that pressure on your eardrum, okay, from all that water pressing down on you, that's only 10 feet. Imagine at 50 or 100 feet, there's a, a huge pressure. So that pressure actually keeps their swim bladder, the pressure on the outside keeps that swim bladder fairly small. But if you quickly raise them to the surface too quickly, Okay, then they're not able to release that gas that's in there. And then as they get to the surface, there's much less pressure. And so less pressure keeping that swim bladder small, it swells up, okay? And eventually it can poke out through their mouth. Okay? And that's what happened with these fish. Is they, they were brought up to the surface too quickly, their swim bladder enlarged, and that, that was what, uh, what killed them. And so you could see it sort of poking out of their mouth. And they were like, really like, get their mouth closed and that like, yeah, I mean, that, that air has to go somewhere, so basically it would just stick off too quickly, then they can't. Um, another interesting fact when I was in this class, and electrofishing is kind of a neat thing that maybe you've never heard of. In electrofishing, you, uh, it's a way to study fish. You can't, like, go fishing to catch fish for food this way. You have to have, like, a permit. But uh, with electrofishing, you put on this backpack generator, and you have these two long wands in your hand. And these wands are electrodes attached to a battery-powered generator on your back, and when you press the, and you just press the buttons, and then fish, all the fish in the water just start floating to the surface. Because they're shocked, okay, by your partners that you're working with, scoop them up and put them in there. It doesn't kill them. They eventually, no, most of them do not die from this. So they're unconscious for a little while, and then they go do the same thing again and see how many they can catch again, and that helps them estimate the population. Some of them do die, you know, there's some casualties, 
Um, but most of them, after you know five or ten, because um, you can't be walking in the water at the same time that you're sending electrical current through, or you're the one that's going to be getting shot. And you also have to be very careful. Well. Um, so they have to wear rubber boots as well. And just a method of gathering fish from a certain area. Fish too, you know, if you're looking to get bigger fish out of the water, it's going to take more uh, actually current to knock them out. Um, you know, a lot of times we were collecting small little fish, so you need a much lower depth. That? Uh, just like a little set when you have like... Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I didn't ever like reach into the water, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it would kill you or anything. David? Oh. I don't know what it would be like. Uh -huh. This is also not related, but here's actually there. And uh, I was putting an outlet in, and I thought power was off to it, um, but it wasn't. So as I was putting in the electrical outlet, I touched the uh, live wire, and it was like... Zzz. And so, of course, <laughs> what do you think Mr. Curie's reaction was? <laughs> he burst out laughing as I am being electrocuted like this. Um, but it's not, it was not a harmful um, shock, but it was a shock nonetheless. Yeah. And I sneeze because of it. Did you sneeze? Wait, yeah. it's like the fish when you No, because I don't think the dog shot collar is like electric <laughs> fencing would be knocked out and just flop over. I don't know. Maybe that's a good invention, Sarah. You should like invent that. Because you know sometimes dogs jump over the fence and then they're away? But maybe if uh, you invented that, then maybe they would just, once they jump the fence, they'd just be laying there for a while. Lindsay? One time? Let me guess, they put the thing on you. No. Oh, okay. My brother was holding it and he didn't hold on. And he went and walked over and he was like getting shocked. And my dad just was laughing. How bad did it hurt? Was he like screaming, crying, or was no, he just not like? Crying. He just like. Yeah. All right. All right, Matt. Um, one time, uh, we had a power outage, so I went to the emergency flashlight that's like charges in the wall. Uh, we cure, and just like a bunch of sparks came out. And sometimes, if you get a real bad shock, it's like you can't, you can't let go. All right, are we ready to move on? Yeah. A uh, fish circle. Like a swimming bladder to like getting shot oh, yes. by a flashlight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is. They're circular with two chambered hearts. Okay? The atrium and one to squeeze the blood out to the rest of the body. That's the other groups as we as we go through. Alright, if we look at the fish, um, some basic anatomy of a fish, uh, and you have these filled in. Um, when you look at a fish, they have obviously fins, um, um, but they have different names. Okay? And when we talk about species, we refer to, we use some words to refer to different parts of them. The anterior end of an organism is the head end. What's the tail end? Yeah, the posterior. How about the top? Now, you could think of this, a fish that floats on, it's on its, you know, sort of horizontally, um, it's, it's belly side, you don't know what that's called? Or the, the spine side up here. Dorsal is the back side, the side of the spine. Ventral. No. Ventral is the name for the belly side of an organism. Are we going to be tested on this? Yeah. Ventral. They have um, nostrils for taking in and uh, scents from the water, an eye. The fins have names. There's a variety of fins that a fish may have. The dorsal fin is that, that back fin usually a large one. Some fish have one, some have more than one. The tail fin is called the caudal fin. Okay, the pectoral fins are the ones that are in the sense organ, the sense is the operculum. But that covers the gills because they're so fragile. They're, they have this sort of tougher outer covering uh, to help them stay is protected. It, is it kind of like the second wing? Sort of. And it's what you see. If you ever look closely at a fish and it's something moving on the side. Internal anatomy of a fish. Okay, we have here dorsal and ventral. Into um, the outside, and that's how a small heart, the heart is um, ventrally located. But there's the atrium, which receives blood, organ, uh, and it's got blood, stomach, and then intestines, where nutrients are absorbed.